I've been asked, could I do videos on specific chemical weapons and then ways of sort of protecting yourself from them? So I thought, yeah, why not? That's a really good idea for a series. So I'm actually going to do this as a series, not an individual video, because I think some people wanted me to do like a 20 minute video where I said, like, this is nerve gas, this is what it does, this is how you protect yourself from it. But I thought that was kind of quite a broad subject, and you're going to either have one kind of video where I forget lots of information, or we could do it as in each kind of family of a chemical agents has its own video and then I can go into a lot more detail on the ways to protect yourself from it and what they actually do. So that's what I'm going to do. So we're going to start this series off with tear gas and there's a couple of different agents in the tear gas series but we're mostly going to focus on the CS but I will briefly talk about some of the others. Now um Tear gas was first used in World War One, where it had a weird chemical name. It was something like zilzil bromide or something like that. No idea how it's pronounced, and I don't really care. Although I'm sure lots of people rant in the comments about me not pronouncing it correctly. Um, and basically, it was quite a nasty thing, but it wasn't very effective in World War One. Mostly because I guess in large open areas it would disperse quite fast. By the time chlorine was already be being used as a lethal agent. Um, obviously soldiers had respirators and then having a respirator will protect you from the weaker sort of tear agents. So there's lots of conflicting information online but it seems lots of the tear gas agents that we know today were developed by Port and Down and if you don't know what Port and Down is it's basically where the UK does very dodgy chemical weapons research. Um, so Port and Down came up with a load of things I think CN and CS gas CS gas is the one that we're mainly going to focus on because it's what everybody knows as tear gas. Now, CS is really nasty stuff to be quite honest, but it's not actually a gas as the name would imply. CS gas is actually, CS itself is a powder, and then that powder has to basically be spread normally by sort of shooting it from a tear gas canister. And what happens is they break on impact or explode and then the actual powder is propelled outwards. You can use pyrotechnics, as far as I'm aware, to actually burn the powder in a sense and send it out that way. And there's lots of other ways of distributing it, often um, sort of watering it down with an actual gas, which you can then spread. But CS itself is actually a particle threat, so it's stopped by a particle filter. Now, how CS works um, to actually kind of make you feel ill and everything is CS gets into your eyes and your nose and your mouth and throat. And what it does is it irritates all the mucous membranes. So, again, I'm not a biologist, I don't understand how all these things work. But the idea is it makes your throat very sore, makes you sort of cough. It's a bit like if you had um, bad sort of acid reflux and you got a load of stomach acid in your throat, if you've ever experienced that. You'll keep coughing and coughing, it's very hard to actually breathe. And it's, you know, really painful and horrible. CS so yes, basically does that. It's where, you know, your eyes will be you're wanting to be shutting your eyes because it will be in your eyes your eyes will be watering you know it will be in your throat um, it will be causing you to cough non-stop now CS is considered less lethal but it can kill you very easily in fact because it's funnily enough banned for military use if you're in um, a military you're not allowed to use it against um, other militaries that's a war crime however it's totally okay for police to use it against civilians because logic so, and I think militaries doing uh, policing activities are allowed to use it as well, but... So, what CS basically does, as I said, is it causes irritation to the eyes and throat, causing you to cough, sneeze, you know, have tears in your eyes, really painful eyes. Now, the idea is that, in the less lethal scenario, you shoot it into a crowd of people, the CS goes everywhere, everybody starts coughing, you know, and are in a lot of pain and discomfort and they leave the area and then they feel better a bit later. So that's how it's meant to be used. The issue is lots of police forces and everything don't use it the way it's meant to be used and some people are likely to have bad reactions to it. So if you have asthma or any other kind of breathing problems, like I have asthma, it's not too bad most of the time, but if they were to use CS against me that could you know, cause really serious consequences because it would just cause my lungs to close up and oh you're dead. Um, I was reading about this and yeah, a lot of people with asthma, especially more you know, severely with asthma, if they're exposed to CS gas often they need to be on a ventilator for hours afterwards to actually be able to carry on breathing normally. But I guess that doesn't really concern the authorities very much. Now, the big problem with CS as well is that from everything I've read online, it seems that 
if the police have old stocks of CS gas in storage, and I think this applies to CN and a lot of the other tear gases as well, over time they break down and actually become more harmful. This isn't like the tear gas effect gets stronger, it's that the chemicals that are used to disperse the gas break down and create um, you know, actual poisons, like cyanide is one of the things that very commonly forms from CS gas. So, in theory, as much as you could just use a P3 filter against tear gas, I would definitely recommend an ABE or ABEC filter or whatever, you know, a full-on CBRN filter or ABEC filter with a P3 filter on it. The reason being that if it's just the CS gas you're um, exposed to it in itself, then the particle filter would do fine. The issue is often it's not. So, um, you know, if there's other chemicals breaking down from the CS, you could be very ill or dead from those. So, um, in my opinion, you want your full-on filter anyway, just because you don't really know what's going to happen. Now, CS is also um, used in products like pepper spray. Not always as 100% of it, but, you know, that's just basically CS in gel form, although lots of pepper sprays do, you know, contain chili and pepper type ingredients in them, so when it gets in the eyes, it's extremely painful and irritating and, you know, causes confusion and whatever else. But... The important thing to know about CS gas, as I was saying, is it's not strictly a gas. It's a particulate that's a very fine mist of particles. And, again, it's defeated by a P3 filter. Um, so, yeah, it's very, very nasty stuff. Now, another issue with CS is it's very flammable, which means that if you have it sprayed in a riot scenario and somebody throws a Molotov or there's another source of ignition, um, everything can literally go up in flames very quickly. Now, if you want to see just how nasty CS is in this um, sort of conflagration, I guess you'd say, um, look up the Waco siege or the Waco standoff or the Waco massacre, basically where the US government decided it was going to murder lots of religious people in a building because the ATF screwed up um, a gun operation. Um, and what they did is they pumped CS into the building for about six hours. Now, as said before, CS is meant to be used in wide open spaces where people can actually get away from it. What they did is they penned them in, they uh, gassed them for about six hours of the CS gas. Lots of people by this point had already died, supposedly, just from inhalation of CS because of this, the overwhelming amount of CS. The government also fired pyrotechnic charges into the building, and there was lots of other ignition sources. Eventually, it just went up like a powder keg. They kept the fire engines from going in. Nearly everybody inside died, either from dying from CS poisoning, being burned alive, or um, dying from the cyanide that comes off of CS when it burns, which is another great thing about it. So, as I was saying, CS is basically something that should never be used, because it is, in fact, a chemical weapon designed to kill and, you know, uh, maim. But it's alright for the police to use it against civilians, just not militaries to use it against each other, because what a funny world we live in. So... Yeah, for protection against CS, you want your respirator, you want a full face respirator. If you're going with a half face respirator, you need to have some sort of swimming goggles or something else on to protect your eyes. Full face respirator is good for obvious reasons, that it protects your eyes and your breathing tract. So let's get this on just to demonstrate. Obviously, I don't have any CS gas. With a mask like this on, obviously you've got your particulate filter on to protect you from inhaling the CS gas and the mask will protect your eyes and everything else. But as I was saying, you might want a full ABEC filter just simply because CS can create a lot of toxins if it burns or if it's slightly too old stuck or whatever else of it. Now, another thing to note about um, CS gas is one of the uses for it is to train soldiers in mask confidence tests, which is normally what they're called a respirator confidence tests. And the idea behind those tests is that you get a load of soldiers to go into a gas chamber. They're gassed once normally, I think there's a standard way of doing it, without a mask on and then with a mask on. And the idea is that when they haven't got the mask on, they're in lots of pain, confused, feeling sick, you know, all those things from the CS gas. When they do it again with the respirator on, uh, all of a sudden they don't have any of those symptoms because the CS can't get into their eyes or lungs. So, obviously... It's good for training people how to use respirators, but it is nasty, nasty stuff. Now, another thing to note about CS that I was just going to get onto is how do you actually get it out of your system if you've got it in? Because obviously getting away from the area is what most people would do. 
Now, supposedly, you know, washing your eyes out with water isn't necessarily a good thing because apparently CS reacts with water, but I found lots of conflicting information on this. I've also heard people say, you know, washing your eyes out with milk is very good. I've heard other people say antacids, like you take if you had stomach acid things. Funny enough, when I was speaking about acid reflux earlier, I didn't even pick it on to this, but apparently, you know, dissolving sort of antacids in, into water and then pouring that on your eyes and drinking some of that is good for, um, getting off of your throat, but the main thing is to try and avoid contact with it in the first place and obviously make sure you have respiratory protection if you come into contact with it because it's nasty nasty stuff. Now CS apparently also burns the skin and a load of other tear agents cause skin damage as well. Basically if it touches your skin it causes skin irritation, not to the degree it does with the eyes, you know, and nasal tract and everything else sort of respiratory tract, but if it does come into your contact with your skin, apparently it can cause, you know, skin damage, chemical burns, things like that. So as I was saying, CS and tear gas is very, very nasty stuff. Um, it's probably the chemical agent you're most likely to actually encounter, simply because it's something that's actually still used, and, you know, I think very sadly it's still used because it does kill people, and, you know, I don't see why lots of governments actually have the right to use it against their own people. Especially because you see in lots of countries that it's actually used on peaceful protests, not actual riots. But spray them with a load of CS, shoot a load of CS canisters into a crowd. That's not even to mention that when you fire CS grenades from grenade launchers, often they kill people if they hit them in the head or, you know, elsewhere. Because you're actually shooting a projectile at people at very high speed. So, again, CS is nasty stuff. Um, but, yeah, the best way of protecting yourself from it is obviously with most chemical, I say with most chemical weapons to be honest, is um, a full face respirator with the correct filter. But yeah, it's nasty, nasty stuff that should be totally banned as it is banned for military use, but sadly they can still use it against civilians because democracies.